Yes, the one with the ants. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. So The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers picks up right where the Fellowship of the Ring left off. Boromir is dead, Merry and Pippin have been captured, Sam and Frodo, they went off on their own adventure. And I guess the way that they did this in the book was that they'd split the book into two different parts. So I guess in one book you had Legolas, Aragorn, and Gimli doing their thing, and then in the other one you had Sam and Frodo following Gollum down that track and all of that. And when they tried adapting the Lord of the Rings back in like the 70s or whenever that was, apparently Tolkien was against the idea of interweaving the stories together like they did in this movie. But thankfully this movie worked and it worked well. So the movie starts off and you see a flashback of Fellowship of the Ring. All of these movies start off with some sort of flashback. And you see what happens after Gandalf gets sucked down by the Balrog in the Mines of Moria. And dude, Gandalf is a beast. He's following this giant horned demon down this giant like tunnel or whatever that was, just hacking away at it with his sword. I'm telling you dude, if every old guy was like Gandalf is in this movie, the world would not be a bad place to live in. So the Two Towers more or less focuses on the Kingdom of Men. You get to see Rohan and you get to see more of Gondor. And the movie starts off with a really dark tone. It's kind of like the Empire Strikes Back. I mean, the Fellowship of the Ring was dark too, and so is Return of the King. But this one just has the slow, ominous feel that it's just all building up to something. It has the least amount of action. It's a lot of dialogue in this movie. And you really get the feeling throughout that our heroes are just not in good shape. So then Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, they're all in the woods, they're looking for Merry and Pippin. Things are not looking good for them, and then their hope turns around in the form of Gandalf the White. Yep, since Saruman turned, Gandalf is now the new White Wizard of the Order. And while I do think his costume for Gandalf the Grey did look a little bit cooler, Gandalf the White is a complete stud. There's a lot of new characters introduced into this movie, mainly the people of Rohan. King Theoden is probably the second most important person introduced in this movie. He's played very well by Bernard Hill, and at the beginning of this movie he's being controlled by Saruman, and he is a completely different character from the rest of this movie and in Return of the King. In the beginning of this movie, it feels like he's being played more by Christopher Lee than he is by Bernard Hill, which is important seeing how Saruman has complete control over him. He's also being controlled controlled by Grima Wormtongue, who's just this nasty little rat of a character. The king's niece and nephew, Eowyn and Aomer, they don't know what's going on, they're freaking out. And then Gandalf the White comes in to save the day. Now this scene where Gandalf is freeing Theoden from Saruman's grasp is really cool for a couple different reasons. One, just the way that they shot this thing, it completely focuses on Gandalf, you see all the action going on in the background. And I mean, it does pan away to show Legolas, you know, karate punching that one guy. But other than that, the camera doesn't really fade away from Gandalf at all, which is really cool. Plus with the music going on, it just makes for a really epic scene. I'm gonna say epic a lot in these Lord of the Rings reviews, but that's just what these movies are. Another reason this is cool is this is the first time we get to see Gandalf overpowering Saruman. Like you know in the Fellowship of the Ring, Saruman beats Gandalf down to a pulp, he barely escapes alive. But in this movie, Gandalf is freeing Theoden and Saruman's all, Yeah, you have no power here. Then Gandalf takes off his traveling cloak and he's all blinded by the whiteness and is awesome. Awesome. Then Gandalf is all, I release you, Theoden. Pow! And then boom, Saruman is out of there. Now on the other end of this story, you have Sam and Frodo. They're still trying to do the main quest of carrying the ring to Mordor. And you see them grow a lot. You see the ring weighing on Frodo even more than it was in the Fellowship. And I feel like with some of their dialogue, it could have come off really cheesy if they really didn't get the tone of the ring right. Like when you know Sam and Frodo were talking about the ring and they're all, oh, the ring is so dark, it's alive, it's eating at Frodo. If they didn't have those shots focusing specifically on the ring, they didn't have that ominous tone going around with it, I would probably be like, yeah, Sam and Frodo, um, Arkham Asylum, have you guys ever heard of it? You should check it out, it's a pretty cool place. But no, you see as the viewer also that this ring is just a living thing and it really has a mind of its own, a will of its own. And this thing is just destroying Frodo. Which is also cool because you get to see Sam step up more in this movie. Sam is the emotional tug behind this entire movie. And at the end of this movie where they're talking about, oh, I wonder if we're going to be put in any of the great stories. Frodo is like, oh, you forgot one of the chief characters, Samwise the Brave. Frodo wouldn't have gotten far without Sam. And you know, a lot of times when people say that, they're like, yeah, but I mean, come on. I'm the main character. Like honestly, I love Harry Potter, but if Harry said that to Ron, I'd be like, you're lying, dude. But in this movie, Frodo is absolutely right. If he didn't have Sam with him, he would have been dead minutes after leaving the Fellowship. And while Sam and Frodo are still cool, they don't really know where they're going at all. So now we're introduced to the scene stealer of the movie, Gollum. Andy Serkis as Gollum was one of the, it's the performance of a lifetime to be honest. This could have come off really terrible because this was the early 2000s, CGI was used but not a lot. And to have a completely CGI character that was so important to this story, if this failed, this movie really would have been brought down a lot. But thankfully the animators at Weta and Andy Serkis himself made sure that Gollum was one of the coolest characters ever put to film in the world. Gollum had the ring for 500 years before Bilbo got it and he wasn't much different from a hobbit. 
They elaborate more on this in The Return of the King, but for now you just see Colm and he's kind of mysterious. And he has like split personalities. He's trying to go after the ring, but at the same time he's trying to be good. But it's just that the ring has polluted and poisoned his mind so much that he just can't help himself. He's a really tragic hero when you think about it. Later on, they're still trying to get to Mordor and they end up getting captured by Faramir, who is actually Boromir's brother. And what's really interesting about Faramir is I think that they show with Faramir what Boromir could have become if he did not succumb to the ring. I mean, Faramir does slip up a little bit. He captures Sam and Frodo and he's trying to take them to Gondor. He has his reasons too. I mean, you see why in the extended edition? Because his dad is really just... He's not a nice dude. He basically sees Faramir as like the scum of the earth and he sees Boromir as Chuck Norris. So you can understand where he's coming from, but at the same time he's able to overcome all of that and he helps Sam and Frodo in the end. Now I'd say the slowest parts of this movie probably involve Merry and Pippin and Treebeard and their whole thing. It's cool and I understand why it happened in the movie because in the end when they're taking Isengard it's amazing. I'm just saying when Treebeard is talking and you know he's giving Merry and Pippin a history lesson, it's kind of like when you're sitting down at the Thanksgiving table and your grandpa is rambling off stories about back in my day and you're kind of like okay I get it I'm bored but I'm gonna listen anyways. But those scenes are supposed to feel slow because they're slow to Merry and Pippin so they're supposed to feel slow for you. So if there was a way to put Merry and Pippin and Treebeard in this movie in the best possible way, I think that they did it well with this movie. Still doesn't change the fact that those scenes are kind of slow, but hey, it works out for the movie, so what can I say? Now the people of Rohan, they're trying to escape Sauron's army, so they go to their little fort called Helm's Deep, which is at the bottom of this little hill, it's backed up by a mountain, so they're completely, like, trapped in there. But they only have to fight one front, so you wouldn't think it'd be that bad, right? No, nope, they got their work cut out for them. It's crazy, just tens of thousands of orcs just come at them in the Battle of Helm's Deep, but it makes for one of the coolest battles in film history. Like right when they're all on the gates right there and they're prepping up for the battle and just rain starts pouring, Theoden's standing there and he just goes, and so it begins. Right there, I just get like chills down my spine because you're like, okay, strap yourselves in guys, this is going to be awesome. And it really is. It's just a perfectly balanced scene. I mean, they add in some humor there with Legolas and Gimli counting how many people they're killing. You see Aragorn really taking charge where he becomes more of the general and the king that he needs to become. It's just, it's an awesome scene, okay? And then the movie's wrapping up. Gandalf says, the Battle of Helm's Deep is over, but the war for Middle-earth has just begun. That, along with the ending with Sam, Frodo, and Gollum. You know, Sam gives Frodo this really cool, heartwarming speech. Faramir lets them go. It's all good. But then Gollum is still confused in the head, and he thinks Frodo betrayed him. And so Gollum's plotting to himself to have Frodo and Sam be eaten by this giant spider in the next movie. Just the way that this entire movie wraps up, and with Gollum's song in the end credits. There is a sense of relief at the end, but at the same time, you feel like something else is coming. The Two Towers is one of those perfect middle ground movies. You can tell it's part of a bigger story, but at the same time, it can stand on its own as a solid movie, and a solid entry, and this trilogy. The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, gets an A+. So your favorite battle scene in any movie ever, what is it? Comment down below, let me know, and thanks for watching this video. If you guys like it, you can click here to see more.